Nigel, all things for the 59 plus 20. Your 5959 plus 5 with a bit of QSB, Nigel. Solid uh, copy from you down there in uh, Devon. And uh, nice to meet up with you on 40. This is our first on 40, Nigel. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about and show you the ATS25 Plus, an all-mode HF receiver, including the FM broadcast band. Now, I don't normally cover hardware receivers in general, apart from SDRs, but this little device caught my attention. Maybe it was the nice colored touchscreen which made it stand out and made me think of a squirrel. The ATS25 Plus has an inbuilt rechargeable battery, so included in the box is a USB-C type cable. Now this cable can also be used to upgrade the firmware as well as charging the internal battery. Now you do get a BNC terminated telescopic antenna which is also included in the box but I would think this is only suitable for the FM broadcast band mainly down to its size. Now the top and bottom case looks like it's made from black brushed aluminium while the front panel and rear panel appears to be the same material used for making circuit boards. You'll also notice the inbuilt speaker is mounted on the top for easy listening. Now on the front we have the 2.4 inch color touchscreen along with a rather large VFO knob. And on the rear we find the USB-C charge port, LED indicator which shows when it's charging, an on and off switch, a 3.5 mm stereo headphone socket, a BNC socket for your antenna and a filter switch to switch between FM broadcast and the HF band. So if we power on the receiver, it takes a couple of seconds to boot up until you're presented with the color touchscreen being active. Now there are a few buttons on screen which control how the receiver operates. First, we have a quick band selection button titled ham. This brings up a list of ham bands which you can choose from. Notice the word bacon in the top left, not too sure what you get for that. You can simply touch the desired button to set the receiver to that band and then once selected, you can use the large VFO knob to fine tune to a station of your choice. Now, if you want to change the step value, then you can just tap on the frequency display where you'd like to adjust the steps. Right next to the hand button, you will find the band button, which allows you to select one of the pre-programmed medium and long wave broadcast bands, including CB radio and some of the higher hand bands. The frequency button allows the user to directly enter the frequency, making it nice and quick to tune to a specific frequency. The mode button allows the user to change the mode of modulation between LSB, USB, AM and FM and CW. You'll also find a BFO button to allow you to adjust the beat frequency oscillator if required. There is however no CW decoder on this model. The receiver's bandwidth can also be changed and while in SSB mode you can slip between 0.5 and 4 kHz. AGC and attenuator buttons are also present down the right hand side of the screen although I didn't feel they worked as well as what I thought they would have done. The next button on the bottom right of the screen will show another set of function buttons. The up and down button will automatically tune to the next strongest signal in that particular direction and the scan button itself will perform a band scan and show you a visual representation of detected signals. And once it's finished scanning, you can then use the VFO control to change frequencies with a nice cursor, making it easy to select the peak signals that was found during the scan. As a side note, this radio is not SDR, so there's no real time band scope to see here. Now the light button also didn't appear to change anything, but the info button will display more technical information about the receiver. The FM button will put the receiver into broadcast FM reception mode. Mono and stereo transmissions are decoded along with RDS information. Although in my testing, I wasn't able to view any RDS information on the screen at all. Now the settings button will allow you to enter the settings mode where you'll find a limited amount of application settings. Now one setting I would recommend to turn off and that's the digit backlight. This makes it far easier to read the current frequency. So let's take a listen to some examples of some transmissions received with the ATS25 Plus receiver. Yeah, I'm very good, uh, Jeff. Thanks a lot for the call. Always good to hear you there. Yeah, have a good weekend and 73 from Orkney Island. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. QRZ. Back to 
Now, I'm not entirely sure what the problem was there, but if you listen back, you can hear as if the gain is creeping way up between overs. Then you get some kind of strange whooshing noise as the signal comes in. Now, turning the AGC on or off did not appear to make any difference. I also tried using the attenuator just in case the signal was too strong, but yet again, the whooshing at the start of each over was still present. Now, this radio receiver is Arduino controlled, and I believe firmware updates do happen from time to time. Obviously, this could just be a firmware issue or maybe a hardware issue. If any of you own one of these types of receivers, I'd be very interested to learn if yours does the same as this, and if it does, were you able to resolve it? Anyway, guys, that's a brief overview of the ATS25 Plus receiver. I'll link below to where I purchased mine from if you're interested. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and YouTube members, along with all of you subscribers. Without your support, creating these videos would not be possible. If you'd like to view behind the scenes footage or have slight early access to my video releases, then please consider becoming a YouTube member or Patreon subscriber. Links below as usual. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon in the next video.